The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Quite a negative day in the markets yesterday, and we got a little bit of a reprieve, a little bit of a reversal as you actually get the Dow in negative territory today, off by about 100 points. You get the S&Ps, kick things off up by 20. Let's zoom in on a five-minute chart to see the overnight action yesterday. You drive from a close on Tuesday of 57.21. You trade down almost 90 points from that high, from where we were at the end of action on Tuesday to the lows of yesterday afternoon. And boy, we drove basically right to the lows at the end of the day yesterday, and we're just off of those price levels. You did make it off up to a high pre-market, 3 a.m. Eastern time. We got some ECB action out there. We'll talk about that as they keep rates where they are. But we had a high at about 3 a.m. of 56.62. We're trading right now at 56.57 right now, positive by about 19 points or about a third of a percent. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 162 points, 20,160. You were at a 19.9 handle last night. We're up by about eight tenths percent. As I mentioned, the Dow in negative territory off by two tenths percent. And look at the action in the Dow yesterday, right? Pretty remarkable. I mean, you jump around to some of those Dow stocks, you couldn't you know, miss, whether it's Walmart. Look at the drive higher, 69.75 up to 71. There is a rotation going on. Uh, you can't deny it. I was just jumping around yesterday. You, you just pick any of the stocks that might make sense, right? Going out of tech, Home Depot. Look at the drive higher you had yesterday. As the market falls apart, you go from 367 to 375. Even a company like Lowe's going from under 240 to 245 yesterday. Pretty remarkable in some of those actions. Russell spikes up. Not quite the same as the Dow yesterday. You did make it to a 2300 handle yesterday in the Russell. You're trading right now at 2251. Bitcoin chopping around 65,000, 65,145 this morning. Crude holding somewhat steady at 8113. I say holding somewhat steady because you take a look at this thing on a daily basis. And we're just chopping around between 80 and 85 right now. You were at a low of $72 back in the beginning of June. You jump over that gold contract. Gold behaving very well i'd say you did break above this important 2450 area that's where you double topped from april and may you got above that area with quite a decisive break on july 16th we pulled back a bit yesterday we're still above that price level gold up by seven dollars this morning and as i mentioned we do have some currency action with the ecb in play right now we'll pull that up in a moment you got the 10 year right now a little bit of a slight reprieve, you could say, as we got a little bit of lower price and higher yield right now coming at you. You jump over to the 10-year. Rates all in focus. As I mentioned, you got the ECB meeting today. You have the Fed meeting at the end of this month. All the focus on the September meeting. And what's interesting is, so the ECB holds rates steady. They're at 3.75%. Now, they already moved. Why not? Let's go over to the headline right now. Why not? There it is. ECB rates keep rates steady pausing divergence with the Fed, okay? The European Central Bank, bank opts for a wait-and-see approach after cutting last month for the first time since 2019. Now, they did cut, okay? But they cut to 375. If the Fed was at 4%, the conversation would be wildly different. The only reason the Fed has room to cut right now is because you're at five and a quarter to 5.5. Been saying this a long time. There is room to cut and still make the case that you're in a high, highly restrictive policy rate, right? The ECB lowered their interest rate last month to 3.75. They don't have the same area of room that we do, okay? So they pause. Um, some of the quotes in here talking about that There is still some factors here, okay? Central banks, are, uh, where is it? Yeah, there are some quotes in here saying, you know, we're not going to move too quick, too fast. There's still some factors here that are talking about inflation. 
Yeah, inflation in the eurozone has declined significantly. Prices remain sticky in some parts of the economy, especially in large service sector. Rapid wage growth has kept price pressures, pressures alive in a sector where labor represents a large share of costs. The ECB said in a statement that sticky underlying inflation in May had been driven by one-off factors, while most measures were either stable or edged down in June. So the ECB remains on track to cut rates at a quarterly pace. Okay, quarterly pace means every three months they're cut. Not every meeting. That'd be almost every other meeting. Be interesting to see where the Fed goes once they do start cutting, if that's where we end up in September. So they're at 375. We're at five and a quarter to 5.5, right? Interesting. We jump from the 10-year, which is currently sitting at a yield of 4.18%. We jump over the dollar index. Had a great conversation with our man Teddy Cakestat yesterday. If you didn't check that out, folks, everything we do available on our YouTube page. Just search TFNN, find our channel, all the interviews, all the shows right there. You can subscribe, like our channel, get those notifications, okay? Uh, you got the dollar, a little bit stronger this morning, up by about 13 pennies. Now, it's interesting. You got the dollar stronger. I mean, gold is just so strong, man. You think about, for some context, where gold is, okay, versus where the dollar is. Versus historically, you want to see something wild, man, okay? You take a look at this dollar index, folks, and you're talking about basically sitting at highs in any area that we have been relative to, what, 2002, right? We've only been, been above this price level on one occasion, and that was when the Fed hiked before anybody else in the world, and we were much higher. Now... Well, you want to get into the variables, man. I was having a great conversation with Jacob the other day, and we're just talking, you know, just spitballing about what's going to happen, man. Politics having nothing to do with the conversation, but boy, politics come into the market, right? That's always the tough part about the den. We don't want politics in the den, but politics drive a lot of the market action. So you want that part of the thing in the den, right? Uh, what's going to happen, man? Trump's a huge favorite right now, okay? You got Biden out there with COVID right now. Now the calls are even louder that Biden's got COVID. His health is in focus again. He can't even be on the campaign trail. Maybe that's going to be the last impetus to get him out of the race. Does that even matter? I don't know. But my probability is that his chances of winning are a big fat zero. So anybody else at the top of that ticket has a greater chance than zero because for the longest time, anybody has been calling for anybody but two old white men running. OK, so you don't know what's going to happen if somebody else might enter that race. I we all we always joke that nobody likes Kamala um, and she seems to be the, the chosen one that, that replaces. So I don't know that. But you don't know if somebody else comes into that ticket, um, what could happen. But if Trump comes in, man, you got two things. OK, you have. Lower corporate taxes big time. OK, so market higher. But what happens with the China tariffs, man? What happens I mean, you know, this whole deal with China paying the tariffs, China does not pay the tariffs. Businesses pay the tariffs that then transfer those costs onto consumers or eat that cost themselves. China does not pay tariffs. They don't pay them. Businesses pay the tariffs. Yes, it will stifle competition in China. OK, um, that is going to have an inflationary factor. So then what happens? We're going to finish this up on the other side. Because is this going to be a thorn in the side of inflation that might actually force the Fed to remain higher, which will drive the dollar even higher? Finish it up. We'll be right back, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got S and P's right now up by 15 points, pairing a little bit of those gains. You get the Dow now off about 145. Russell off by 12. Nasdaq 100. You're up by 157. Let's check out some of the magnificent seven as their cause. Is that what we're called? What, what, what's, what's the what's the theme right now? Is it the magnificent seven still? Uh, I don't think it is, right? But somehow that one stuck. You got Apple in positive territory, back to about almost 231 right now. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft up a few dollars to 446. Amazon, did you get your Prime Day goods? They always get a nice little pop. Amazon up by $2. Uh, anecdotal, but I was. Before I went to bed last night, I got a uh, couple things for Prime Day. And boy, if you're, I got a, I got a, Echo Dot for Tommy. We got an Echo Dot. They always sell their own products at the cheapest discount. That would make sense, right? Uh, great way to drive revenue. They probably have the biggest margins on those. They bring you into the ecosystem, et cetera. It is interesting. So he's got a he's got a Prime tablet, right? Whatever the Amazon Kids tablet, whatever those are. And you pay for Kids Plus. So check this out, folks, right? I think this is going to be the deal. We're going to find out. One of the cool things about Amazon is you can always return the goods, okay? Okay. 
not always, but you pretty much can. I'll tell you, you know, we're di- <laughs> we're digressing here, but even during last storm season, man, I bought like four air conditioners that I ended up returning. You got 30 days in there. I bought a generator from Home Depot that I had 30 days to return. It's amazing that you can take advantage of some of these offers from some of these big box retailers. And you'd never be able to do that in other countries. Can you imagine going to another country and they say, you know, during storm season, you know, just if you want, if you have the capital and the credit available, you can go out, you can buy a generator from Home Depot. I think it's 30 days that you may have. Okay, they shorten it up. You can buy air conditioners. You can keep them all in your garage for 30 days during the peak month. And if you don't use it, you just bring it right back and you get all the money back. See, you know, you're not doing any disservice. It's, it's, it's just like our 30-day money-back guarantee for our newsletters, folks. We encourage people to take advantage to that you want a 30-day money-back guarantee it's not what you wanted that's great thank you for trying it out home depot says the same thing because guess what a lot of times people end up keeping those products nonetheless so amazon you can keep it you got the kids tablet out there okay and with a kids tablet you have this service called kids plus or something i think it's 5.99 a month and it comes with a bunch of different apps right as part of that echo dot you get a year of Amazon Kids Plus. So I got to dig into it because I think the doc cost me like $30 on the deal last night. I'm paying five or six bucks a month for that service. I may end up making like $30 over the course of the year. I got to dig into it. But if you have a kid's tablet, if you're looking for one, the kids stop. But yeah, so anyway, I was purchasing uh, some Amazon products last night. Amazon up a couple dollars. And I don't know if they're out with any of their data in terms of Prime. Let's see. Are they out with it? Yeah, here we go. Let's see what they got. They always announce something. So Amazon announces Prime Day 2024, biggest ever with record sales. Prime members shop millions of deals across 35 categories. Um, let's see what they – well, we'll find we'll find the numbers. But, yeah, they set sales records. No, no numbers in there. It's always anecdotal. And Amazon announced its record-breaking sales for 2024, 48-hour event. Did they put the numbers out? Maybe somebody's got it in the den. Yeah, look at them. High-quality health care they're pushing out there. What are they listening to? All right, we'll pull up some of those numbers in the next break. But they always tout. And, you know, it's pretty remarkable when they keep breaking records because their numbers are always pretty remarkable on a yearly basis, and somehow they beat those numbers. But I was on there last night before I went to bed, taking advantage of some of those deals, getting him a, a kid's Echo Dot so he can talk to that. Say, Alexa, play me a song. Something like that. Okay, getting back to the market. So we have the ECB, keeps rates where they are, and finishing up the conversation, right, there's so many things that go into this in terms of, okay, the Fed's on their cutting path, Right. Well, what happens when these, I mean, folks, China does not pay the tariffs. Remember this. China does not pay the tariffs, okay? This is the stuff that we dealt with with Trump for four years. You're going to start dealing with it again. China does not pay with the tariffs, okay? These are taxes on U.S. businesses bringing in Chinese goods. Yes, it's going to stifle competition from Chinese goods, okay? That would be the reasonable discussion, right, that we need to make Chinese goods less competitive, by making U.S. companies pay taxes on goods that come in from China. That is the wordage that is actually accurate, okay? What does that do? That increases the costs of imports on U.S. companies selling to U.S. customers, which in the long run may uh, help the competitiveness of domestic production, but what does it do short term? It increases the costs of everything coming in from China. And boy, there is a lot of stuff that comes in from China. OK, now you see companies shifting. Boy, you should have made that shift if you were a company like a big company. You saw Apple making that shift away. Right. Trying to get some of the production in India. You saw some of the other companies trying to go, whether it's to Taiwan, um, a number of different companies that they tried to shift their supply chain away from being so reliant on China. But that is an inflationary force. And so what happens if that becomes a driving force? Do we actually see rates come back up? Do we see those inflation numbers shift back up? It's something you want to really keep track of because the market really hasn't reacted to it yet. There has been no discussion about that, whether it's at the Fed, et cetera. Nonetheless, we go over to some economic data. Jobless claims out this morning. 
243,000 above expectations, still a pretty healthy number, okay? Just above 200,000 is a very healthy churn in this in this economy. Yes, you're above expectations. I think the four-week average is now like 234,000 is the number. That smooths it out. Yeah, there it is. Four-week average, 234,750. Continuing claims, 1.87 million, the highest since November of 2021, OK, so that's there. There are signs there of a slightly weakening an economy. That number is out there. The Fed keeping track of that one, obviously. Um, but boy, we're going to be I mean, we're three and a half months out from the election. Biden's now got covid. And, you know, listen, if you're a betting person, right. I'd bet the house on Trump right now if Biden was going to stay in the race. I don't think he's going to stay in the race right now. Covid was the last one, man. He's already catching heat. He can't even be on the campaign trail. Why? Because he's sick. Again, he was supposedly sick for the debate. Now he's sick with COVID. It's just going to keep his health in focus, and it's probably the last impetus that gets him out. I don't know if Kamala's got a shot. Um, but Trump versus Biden has been the mainstay for eight years. It'll be interesting to see what happens. What else is going to be interesting? Where's this market going today? We're coming back for the market open. We're going to talk some equities. When we get back, stay tuned, folks. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We get markets in positive territory, but we do pair some of those gains coming into the opening bell. We were coming in when I began the program at, what, 56, 58 about. We almost give up about 10 points. s and is positive by 11 right now. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by 125 points. That's six-tenths percent in the green. You get the Dow off 100 and the Russell off by eight. We check back in on rates in focus with the Fed coming at the end of this month. You got the 10-year right now. What are you sitting at? Almost 4.2%, 4.19, 4.19, the yield on the 10-year right now. You jump over to the dollar index. We got some dollar strength right now, dollar at 103.93. Now, it's interesting, even with the ECB keeping rates where they are, because they could have cut. And if they cut, remember, then that adds demand for our yield which would need dollars to access. So even with the ECB not cutting, the dollar gets a little bit of a pop today, which, you know, it could have been the other case. They could have cut again. That was kind of the, the, the case there. You have the euro coming back to 109.13. We jump over the dollar yen. Always interesting to keep in focus. As I mentioned earlier, great discussion with our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday on the program. If you didn't check it out, head on over to the YouTube page. Quite a little pullback on the dollar yen that we've had recently, but still some pretty lofty levels. 156.50, kind of chopping around at this recent high that we had back in April, that spike high, that area of the dollar yen. All right, we jump around to some of the other equity news we got this morning. Darden Restaurant Sports, it's been quite a pullback for them, right? From 176 in March, down almost testing basically the lows that you had back here in October of last year. You drive all the way down to a low of 135. We're off $1.74 today. That's about 1.2%. And the news out there for Darden, they're going to acquire, is that Chewy's? Chewy? Tex-Mex Restaurant. Yeah, they're going to join Darden's portfolio that includes restaurants such as, as we know, Olive Garden, Longhorn, Roots Chris Steakhouse, Seasons 52. If you've never been to a Seasons 52, folks, go check one out. Great restaurant, great uh, environment, and they're all into healthy eating. I remember the first time, I've been talking about that in a while, man. First time I went to that restaurant in Tampa, Seasons 52, I said, this is a phenomenal concept. Who owns this restaurant? I want to franchise it. And it was Darden. I said, ah, they got it. Um, yeah, Bahama Breeze is in there. Cheddar's, Eddie V's, another great restaurant they got in there. Longhorn Steakhouse as well. But um, yeah, so they're going after Chewy's. How much? $605 million they're paying to add them to the portfolio for Chewy's. Not bad. All right, Taiwan Semi. They were in focus yesterday because Trump said that he wants more money from them for, for protection. More money. Um, money, whatever, you know, start char charging corporations across the globe for, I don't know, yeah. Taiwan hikes revenue outlook to reflect heated AI demand. They see CapEx at the high end of the outlook after a profit beat. Um, and yeah, they are certainly one of the firms at the heart of AI spending boom. You jump over to Taiwan Semi this morning. TSM is their symbol. And that was the fall off yesterday on Trump's comments. Today, you're getting back some of that. You're up by $5.28, up by 3%. You jump over to NVIDIA. They're catching a pop as well, up by $3.80, up by 3.2%. You jump over to some of the others. Navi uh, excuse me, Intel. INTC. Up by 25 pennies. Yeah, quite the divergence of charts, right? It is remarkable. AMD up by about 1.5% for AMD to 161. Jump over to Boeing. Boeing shares. And this one's quite a case study, man. You know, there's a... Can't help but talk about it. Can you know, They've almost become a pun, which is remarkable. Among a group chat with a friends and I, it's like any time any airline has a problem, anything goes wrong... People love to put the Boeing 777 or something in the headline because it's clickbait a million times over. Pretty remarkable. You jump over to Ford. Ford, quite a run they've been on recently. They're basically flat today, up by three pennies. You got Ford out there. They're going to spend $3 billion to expand the large truck production at a plant that was previously scheduled for EVs as the world shifts. Yeah, they're <laughs> large trucks, man. They're back. Now, you know. Crude prices, folks, gas prices, all things considered, if you benchmark where the price of gas is right now versus where inflation has been, et cetera, pretty affordable prices for gas, all things considered, in terms of where inflation has gone the last four or five years. Uh, the buying power of the dollar drastically reduced, as we all know. Nonetheless, we still got gas. 
what, $3.30 in Florida? I'm sure it varies. I know we have some good prices down here. We got a port right near us in Tampa that helps things out. Uh, but nonetheless, EVs are in trouble. And big vehicles are what America loves, man, and big trucks. Yeah, the large Super Duty trucks, they're going to expand production at a Canadian plant that was previously set to be converted into an all-electric vehicle hub. That ain't happening yet, man. They're going to invest $3 billion to expand Super Duty production, including $2.3 billion at Ford's Oakland Assem Oakville Assembly Complex in Ontario, Canada, they said today. And um, they said the Canadian plant, which is expected to come online, and this is where things take time, man. That plant is not going to come online for two years. And now EVs get shifted off even further, right? You can't deny it in terms of they get a demand problem in EVs for sure. They, they're probably making the right play for their bottom line. But it is remarkable to see how long it's going to take for that to actually take a real shift change when you got plants that are two years out now getting the billion dollars of CapEx versus maybe EVs in that sector. All right. Yeah, you got the Biden stories out there, of course. You had Schumer out there asking for him to step down. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take like Obama and Clinton to come out or something like that, man. Um, this one's interesting, man. You know, everything gets political, which is a bummer these days, but it shouldn't. OK, it shouldn't get political. And it's remarkable that you got the WNBA, you know, they're coming into a new labor deal. And it's great that the NBA supports the WNBA to grow the sport, to grow the sport among women. I was very fortunate. I always talk about went to an outstanding high school in Dedham, Massachusetts, Noble and Greeno School. Uh, one of the greatest things about going to that school from seventh grade to, through 12th grade, so middle school, seventh and eighth, high school, ninth through 12th, you had to play three activity sports, especially in middle school. You had to, boys and girls, okay? And so you had right through it, you had fall, winter, and spring, boys and girls playing sports. It's a great way to whether it's social skills, whether it's meeting everybody, by playing three different sports, each class in middle school is about 55 people. Each class in high school is between about 100 and 110. So the whole school is about 600 kids. And you know everybody. By the time you go through that, when you're playing three different sports every single year, and as you get later into the school, when they make it to sophomore year in high school, you're allowed to do activities. Maybe you can go do um, some nonprofit work. You have to do something each season okay in the in the middle school you're playing sports but they loosen that up maybe you can do drama as well as included you can do activities you're doing stuff to get you out and meeting people being social you know communicating with your classmates all that stuff so it's great they're expanding you know women's sports which is outstanding because sometimes boys are playing sports maybe more than girls especially as you make it through just on a general basis and i don't think that's good i think that girls i saw it myself really gain from that community behavior of playing sports being involved with kids around uh what is interesting though is the whole calls for the fair share and that's where it gets into politics man um the league loses money. It is interesting. Okay, we'll finish it up because you got the NHL out there. I'm a hockey fan. There's no women's NHL. Why isn't the NHL supporting women's professional hockey? You know, all that stuff comes in. Uh, nonetheless, we'll talk about that. We got some more to talk about. Don't go away, folks. Stay tuned. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps, <clears throat> excuse me, up by 11. We got the NASDAQ up by 67. Dow charges higher there on the open. We were in negative territory. Check out that pop on the Dow. 41,500 right now. You charge higher by 150 points. Dow's been on fire, man. Check out that daily on the Dow. No pullback whatsoever, man. Did we just hit 41,611? What is that, the overnight? Yeah, that's the overnight last night that we were up at that highest, but that's an all-time high print on a daily basis. We're about 100 points away from that price level right now. This morning, all the markets in positive territory. Crude with an 81 handle, basically flat on the session. Gold up by $4 at 24.63, and we got notes and bonds pretty much sitting at about 4.18%. And yeah, no, and I appreciate the comments, Stan. And I'm aware, they, so they have professional women's hockey, folks, but the conversation is what I'm talking about in terms of the whole conversation of fair share is that, you know, women NBA players, WNBA, bargaining power, you know, they have the flights that are going on now and everything like that. It's just remarkable to see how this league is supported by the NBA. And, you know, I bring it up because it's in focus in terms of fair share. Yes, you definitely deserve fair share, man. People doing the same jobs deserve fair share, period. And yes, there are times when women when minorities are not getting the same pay for people, guys, white males doing the same jobs, period, okay? But that's where nuance is everything. And nuance and, and the details are so hard to come into many of the conversations these days. And, you know, you have a league like the Professional Women's Hockey League, I, and there's no cause for them to be getting the same pay as – hockey players and NBA money is just bonkers anyway man the amount of money that the NBA makes and they deserve it okay because the there's only what five players on the court at a time you only need two or three massive stars maybe to win an NBA championship the NBA is a global sport man huge across the globe versus some other sports that are huge in in just the U.S., maybe Canada, hockey, right? Um, football, of course, not big in Europe. Basketball, huge in Europe, stuff like that. NBA stars, they are global stars, so it's a different story there. But nonetheless, you know, the point is made in terms of all of that. And, you know, hockey, I'm biased in hockey, man, because the school I went to, Nobles, the independent school league, folks, the ISL, if you look it up in New England, one of the best hockey leagues in the nation. Uh we had a kid on our hockey team. Harold Druken was his name, okay? He was from Canada. 
Nobles was a five-day boarding school, so you could come to Nobles if you wanted. It was about 10 percent of the student body, I think, boarded on a five-day basis. So you came, you boarded Monday through Friday, and then you went home over the weekend. And so what happened, kids, is if you had kids that lived very far away, sometimes they'd go live with teachers that would take them in as as host parents during the weekend. So we had a kid, Harold Truken, comes in from Canada, phenomenal prospect. He was like number eight prospect for his age that he's coming out for the draft and our power play right consisted of this kid would sit at the middle of the blue line and the power play consisted of passing the puck around until you could get him the puck in the middle of the blue line and he would do his thing and that is after being surrounded by other players that were phenomenal in their own right so amazing hockey league and in women in the same aspect, right? At that time, too, you got to think, I was there from 92 to 98 dating myself. And women's sports in general, women's hockey was just starting to accelerate, as it still is. And we had women's players there that were phenomenal in their own right. I think we had a couple Olympic players while I was there that made it to the Olympic team from my high school for the women's team. Just phenomenal watching that type of competition. Um, and, you know, a lot of them going on to D1 scholarships from there. And then you go from there, of course, right? And Drukin did play in the NHL for a period of time um, himself. But so I've seen those types of escalations. But it's just interesting when you get into that in terms of fair share, all that stuff, man. You just need a little bit of reasonable context in all that conversation. All right. Now, these stories are everywhere, man. And I'm going to post because it's just interesting. Um, the story out there. So this one is from The Times. And if you come over to The Times, man, they got a story on the front page. And it's a video story about the assassination. And, you know, no matter what I feel about the man, thank God he's all right. Okay. And I'll post it in the den. It's worth, and I'll post it after my show. That's all I'll do. It's worth, I'll post it right now. It's like a six minute video from the Times of the uh, just abject failure across the board. Okay. And it is remarkable to see across the board the abject failure that took place. They, they saw this shooter in the beginning of the event, they knew he was suspicious. They took pictures of him. They lost track of him. They saw him on the roof. Uh, They knew he was there ahead of time. The snipers had him prior to the event taking place. Then you have the, and this is where, the head of the Secret Service, she was out there on an interview, what was it, Sunday or Monday, made the comment that it was a sloped roof. So for safety factors, they didn't want to secure the roof, so they secured the building. An absolute joke across the board. Everybody's trying to pass the buck. If there's one thing I hope we can all agree on, it is remarkable that somehow people are even coming to the defense of what they've done. Then the story comes out that they were already worried because there was somehow a plot maybe from the Iranians to assassinate Trump. So increased security was already taking place. Um, Abject failure on a personal level. People need to take personal responsibility. Multiple people making decisions around that event need to go immediately. Okay, And that is not political at all. There's no way that our president, former presidents, presidential candidates should face anything near the abject failure they had. And then you look at what happened on the stage after the shooting. Trump saying, wait, wait, raising his fist. Iconic photo. Kudos to him, man. Having... You know, the ability to fist pump on stage after getting shot, right? Photo of the year, photo of the decade, whatever you call it, okay? Secret Service shouldn't allow it, man. He's supposed to get rushed off that stage. The shooter was down. You don't know if there's other shooters. And I know I'm speaking to a lot of reasonable minds to get this. But where is – and I there is a lot of criticism, but it is remarkable to see anybody come to the defense of the abject failure across the board on the Secret Service from the top and the bottom line across the board. Um Our candidates deserve better, man. You want democracy? Democracy is making sure that people can vote for whoever they want to vote for at all times and that elections matter. And that's one of the things I have a problem with Trump with, you know, and just putting it out is that, you know, now you got Vance in there. He's not going to do what Biden did. uh, Excuse me, Biden. Listen to my misspeak, right? Uh, What Pence did and... You know, the peaceful transfer of power, folks, is what separated the U.S. from everybody else for so long. And that's what I worry about most. And I'm not sure that that's something that exists under a Trump presidency. Okay, and doesn't mean that he has a lot of good policies that may come in. Doesn't mean he has a lot of bad ones. But the peaceful transfer of power, 
there's a reason why he's not running with Pence anymore. And that's because, to put it lightly, he almost got Pence killed, man, with his, you know, and that gets political. I get it. But that's the deal. And now he's got a new vice president. And we'll see what happens if he's in power and somebody else loses the 2028 election. What does J.D. Vance do? No, that's where things get difficult. No matter what, man, let's unite and make sure that every candidate is safe and hold the Secret Service accountable because that was just a failure that I think blew us all away. No pun intended because that was, and I shouldn't, it wasn't, just absolutely amazing how much failure they had. So we'll be back to finish up the show, folks. Stay tuned. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps continuing to give up that positive territory, just positive by six points now. That's one tenth percent NASDAQ 100. You dive lower on the open as well. You see those red bars. That's a 15 minute bar. Let's take a look at it on a five minute bar. Yeah, we're diving lower from 20,160 coming into that opening bell. We're off by 130 points from where we were. And you're testing the 6 a.m. lows right now. 20,027 in the NASDAQ 100. You get the Dow catching a bid. You got a rotation going on, man. What about some of the stocks I pulled up at the beginning? Walmart catches a little bit of a bid there. You got Home Depot. They're positive by three quarters percent right now. You jump over to an equity like Lowe's even up by 1.3 percent. You jump over to the stars. NVIDIA, they trade lower on the open. Still up by 1.5 percent, though. You jump over to the big dog, Apple. 
Ooh, watch out, folks. Apple off by nine tenths percent. Apple's going to be just fine, man. They're growing in India. They shifted some of their production from China. They're going to be just fine. Microsoft, yeah, it's happening again. Look at that dive. Probably not what you wanted to see after yesterday on the open, man. Google off in negative territory as well. All right, what else we got, folks? Don't forget about the Tiger Dollar Sale. Current subscribers, anybody thinking about subscribing? You want to attend Basil Chapman's opening call subscriber webinar next Tuesday? Sectors and stocks to focus on in the next phase in the market cycle. If you're signing up for anything you're thinking about, maybe Larry's Live Trading, maybe Market Insights, Mastering Probability. Teddy Cakestat's got a couple of great webinars out there. He's got a great newsletter in terms of the Tiger Forex report. You want to sign up for my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. Head on over to the front page of TFNN. You can get a 20, 30, or 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. You spend 500, you get 600. That's 20%. You spend 1,000, you get 300 free Tiger Dollars. That's a 30% bonus for 1,300. You spend 1,500, you get 600 free Tiger Dollar bonus, a 40% bonus for 2,100. It's running through this week. Check that out on the front page of TFNN.com. We only do a couple sales a year like that. And yeah, don't miss it out. It's a great deal. Current subscribers, man. I'm surprised at everybody out there that's not a current subscriber. Head on over, get some Tiger Dollars. You apply them once, and they're good. All right. And what else? We'll finish it off with $10 million. We talked about it yesterday. Jonathan Tamayo is your World Series of Poker Main Event Champion 2024. He takes home $10 million for beating a record field of 10,000-plus players out there. Closes out yesterday. Nice pile of cash. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's coming up next. Don't forget about that webinar he's got next Tuesday. Check it out. Stay tuned for Basil. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.